Have you ever wondered which Halo Warthog is the fastest? Well, we decided to try to figure out through extensive testing, and boy did it get interesting. But first, before we jump into it, no sponsor on today's video, so instead we're just gonna say a huge thank you to our patrons for making this video possible. A little more information on the end of the video about that, but we won't waste your time about it now. Uh, just uh, maybe listen later if you feel like it. Okay, and just to start things off, this ended up being way, way more complicated than we ever thought it would end up being. And some people might be like, hey, why don't you just look at the in-game files and figure out from there? And that's a good point, and you can do that, but then we would end up with a number that's kind of arbitrary and not very useful for painting a picture as to what these speeds look like as the number would end up looking like 8.2 in-game units per second. It's like, yeah, we can obviously see that there's some numbers that are bigger than other numbers, but it doesn't tell us anything specifically about the Warthogs. We had to get deep into the testing if we were going to figure out exactly which Halo Warthog was the fastest, and coming up with the system onto how to measure each Warthog speed ended up being way more challenging than we thought it would be. First things first, we started out on Halo reach, which is cool because there's the race game type, which right there in the corner tells you the speed of your Warthog. So we're like, hey, this will be a really easy number to start with, and we can kind of go from there. Halo 4, though, doesn't have the race game mode anymore. They switched it back to like a King of the Hill variant, so we couldn't really measure exactly the same way. But Halo 2 Anniversary did have race mode, so getting the numbers from there was easy. When it came to looking at the games that didn't have a speedometer in it, like Halo 4 or Halo 3, Three, we decided we would just build a track that's mostly flat and then we would just time the warthog as we drove its course but then we would also have to measure the distance of the course so that we could divide the distance by the time but then this also ended up being complicated because there's not a clear-cut way of indicating how far away things are in Halo. Unfortunately Spartans don't just have tape measures with them everywhere they go so we had to get a little bit creative. Fortunately enough in Halo 4 the sniper rifle does have a distance tracker on it, which actually has a cap of 343 meters. We thought that was funny. And then in games like Halo 3, for example, we ended up using a capture the flag point, which would tell us how far away the flag was, and then we could figure out the distance that the Warthog would be traveling that way. So we would drive the Warthog the distance of the track, we would time the Warthog, and then we would take the distance, divide that by the time it took for the Warthog to travel the distance, which would give us the total meters traveled per second. From there, we would multiply that by 60 to get our meters per minute, and then multiply it again by 60 to get our meters per hour. This would then be this big number, which we would divide by a thousand so that we could convert our meters to kilometers, which would then give us our speed, where we could multiply that by 0.621, which would convert our kilometers per hour to miles per hour, so we had both versions of this number based on wherever our viewers live. And this is a good starting point, but it ended up still not being the 100% best way to handle this. Now, like we said earlier in the video, we weren't trying to get the most accurate specific numbers to go in some Halo encyclopedia book on max speeds for every Warthog, but we did want to make a list more or less of the fastest to slowest Warthog. The problem with us measuring the warthogs in this format as the way that we tested for each warthog didn't account for acceleration, meaning that the average speed would actually be significantly lower than what the warthog's upper speeds would be because it would be averaging in the slower speeds when it was early on in its acceleration. So then we would have these drastic differences in speeds from the warthogs that we calculated the speeds for versus the warthogs where we could just straight up see the top speeds from. So we had to re work our game plan which made things a little more complicated and added a lot of extra steps but I think this was probably the best way to approach this where for the sake of calculating Halo Warthog speeds we would not look at the speedometers in any of the games and we would test each Warthog in the same exact fashion so that at the very least we're limiting the amount of variables that we can because going across multiple different Halo games we are already limited in trying to recreate similar scenarios for each Warthog to try. On. Then on our actual tests of each Warthog, we were going to change our timing methods where we only timed the final 100 meters of the Warthog driving on the route. This would make things more complicated in trying to calculate distances, but by leaving 200 meters of runway, it would give the Warthog a chance to accelerate to at least somewhat close of a top speed, which would at the very least make our Warthog 
calculations on the games where we have no way of checking the speedometer closer to what their actual top speed is than what we were getting before when we were just averaging things. And by taking the same approach for the games that do give us speedometers, it at least makes sure that our comparisons across each game are at the very least consistent. And we can go and double check the numbers later. For instance, when we tested timing our own Halo Reach Warthog with our timing method and not using the speedometer, the score we ended up getting was just within a couple of miles per hour of the actual top speed that we could see in the in-game speedometer. So this scoring system at the very least gives us a consistent way to compare all of the Halo games across the board. Now, of course, in a perfect world, if we could make these super long race tracks that were like 800 meters straight across, we could only capture the last 100 at fully max speed and our numbers would be even more precise but with limitations in games like Combat Evolved, Halo 2, and even Halo 3, we don't have that much space to work with so doing this within just 300 meters was really our best option across the board. So like I said with Halo Reach we ended up timing it over the course of the last 100 meters of its 300 meter track and it took 3.04 seconds on average for the Warthog to travel the last 100 meters. So we do some division, we multiply it by 60, we multiply it by by 60 again, and we found that the Halo Reach Warthog travels at approximately a top speed of around 118 kilometers per hour, which is about 73.3 miles per hour. For Halo 3, we did have to make some revisions to our track because the road was kind of curved and was making it really hard to time things and get a consistent time, but we did fix it and we ended up getting an interesting look at the times here. After the 200 meters of acceleration, the final 100 meters were crossed in 3.19 seconds, which meant that that the Halo 3 Warthog had an average top speed of around 112 kilometers an hour or 69 to 70 miles per hour. Despite Halo 3 ODST being built off of the same engine from Halo 3, there is something surprising that happened with the Warthog here we didn't expect. Now, obviously in ODST, we couldn't just build a map in Forge to test the Warthog. So we ended up doing an out of bounds glitch that we know from ODST speedrunning, which gives us this huge open space where the wildlife reserve normally is with an invisible ground to drive on. And out of all of our tests, the Halo 3 ODST Warthog averaged at about 3.4 seconds to cross the final 100 meters, which was only about 105 kilometers an hour or 65 miles per hour, which is just kind of a tap down slower than the Halo 3 Warthog. Now, of course, we can't rule out the possibility that the invisible terrain may be affecting the Warthog speed here, though it didn't seem like there was any interruptions that would have caused the Warthog to go slower. If anything, our Halo 3 tests would have been the more riskier test that we would have assumed would have been slower or could have been impacted by the terrain or human error more. So this ODST number was really interesting to us. Also, if you're wondering how we were able to even measure distances in Uplift Reserve to begin with, we actually ended up using the ODST waypoint system that is in the map section of the game where you can put down custom waypoints and then you can utilize the compass to figure out how far away your custom waypoints are, which was able to allow us to set up players standing at the different distances, such as the 200 meter distance, so the driver would know to hit their timer, and the 300 meter distance, so the driver would know to stop their timer. Over in Halo 4, the Warthog here was able to clear the 100 meters in just 3.1 seconds, which ends up being about 116 kilometers per hour, or 72 miles an hour. And across all of our tests for Halo 2 Anniversary, the Halo 2 Warthog also was able to cross its last 100 meters in 3.1 seconds, giving us the same 116 kilometers an hour, 72 miles an hour that Halo 4 had, which we thought was really interesting, but we also remembered that Halo 2 Anniversary was built straight out of the Halo 4 engine. So it's not actually that surprising that across the short time that Halo 2 A was developed that the Warthog speed ended up being exactly the same. While we were at it, we also did decide to test out the Halo 2 Anniversary Golden Warthog, which was so fast comparatively, it cleared the 100 meters in just 2.76 seconds, which ended up being 130 kilometers an hour or around 81 miles per hour. Going back to Halo Combat Evolved, it was a little bit tricky to figure this one out here. We ended up choosing to load up on Death Island as it kind of gives you these wide spaces. We loaded in to capture the flag so we could see how many meters away we were from the flag point. We found this stretch here that kind of overlaps with a little bit of water. But fortunately enough, from what we can tell with Combat Evolved physics, the water doesn't actually affect affect the Warthog speed unless you get to a little bit deeper than where we were driving. But from what it seemed like, we were hitting top speed 
around 120 meters in anyways and just riding the top speed all the way through till the end so we weren't too worried about the combat evolved warthog needing enough speed but it ended up clearing the last 100 meters in 4.4 seconds which ended up being significantly slower than any other warthog from any game that we had tested so far that's just 81 kilometers per hour which is like 50 miles per hour now there's been a lot of rumors and speculation that in combat evolved the warthog at the end on the maw is actually supercharged to go faster so we wanted to make sure we tested out that warthog as well just to make sure there weren't any discrepancies from whatever we could test out it didn't actually seem like the warthog ever at any point would reach a higher speed than what we had seen from the other test we had done we don't actually know where the rumor of the maw warthog being faster originates from it's probably developer commentary somewhere and it is very possible that this warthog is tweaked in some way maybe it can hit the max speed at a faster rate or something to climb up some of those big hills or maybe there's special speed zones on those hills that we can't really test in this format but as far as what we could tell in straightaways it looks like it's the same speed this same line of thought did make us want to go back and check halo 3's warthog on the final level halo just because we know that johnson's warthog is invincible so it does have a set of different properties associated with it when it came to figuring out how to test johnson's warthog on the last level of halo 3 this one was really interesting Interesting because there was a lot of challenges trying to find a good straightaway where we're not impacted by random shaking or ramps inclines and declines was really challenging eventually we found this corner where if I jump off the ramp just right and hopefully not fall off the edge here we could wrap the warthog around back here and we would have just about 300 meters where we could test the warthog speed and this actually ended up being a perfect place to test it here and since we know that this is a warthog variant since it's indestructible we thought maybe the speed would also have been maybe tweaked a little bit to go a little bit faster but after testing this multiple times it actually looks like that this warthog moves at just about the same speed as the regular halo 3 warthog as well and if you're wondering how we were able to measure this strip to make sure it's 300 meters master chief does have binoculars that can measure about 23 meters so we ended up using that to measure the distances between these yellow markers and then from there figuring out they're about 45 meters apart we were able to add that up and it equaled to about 300 meters i don't know the exact number it was when we were testing it but we were honestly really happy that this was like the perfect length runway but when it came to halo 2 itself this one would prove to be the most challenging thing we've ever faced when it came to trying to measure speed this might actually sound surprising but seriously we looked through the multiplayer the campaign every game type imaginable there is no instance anywhere in halo 2 as far as we could tell where there is an on-screen measurement that is shown we first tried looking at the sniper rifles to see if maybe there was like a little zoom number or something on there there was nothing there so the next go-to thing was maybe try seeing if the capture the flag would tell us the distance from the flag and in halo 2 it didn't do that either oddball no luck territories no luck assault no luck either we tried looking at the in-game road signs that that didn't really make any sense and there were boxes that had weights on them but no measurement whatsoever there is a couple of sources online that say that plasma pistol shots dissipate when overcharged after 50 meters so to test that to make sure it's consistent across each halo game we started in combat evolved and the plasma pistol shot went way beyond 50 meters it was like 77 then we loaded up on the remake of that same map in halo 2 and the plasma pistol shot still shot clear across the map even though this version of the map is even larger than the the combat evolved version so we weren't able to measure distance that way either we thought motion tracker would be a great way but nowhere in halo 2 does it actually say what the distance on the motion tracker is it's assumed to be about 20 meters but there's no actual conversion showing that that is the case and while we are able to look into the game files and find what the units per second is or the unit speed in halo 2 it doesn't necessarily mean that the units converted into meters for halo 2 is the same as the units converted into meters for combat evolved or halo 3 which means we can't necessarily rely on using a conversion rate from halo combat evolved or halo 3 to convert for halo 2 as halo 2's conversion rate could be completely different halo 2's in-game units might not be the same as halo 3's in-game units as far as how it applies into meters we even tested this by trying to measure the length of a warthog in combat evolved versus measuring the length of a warthog in halo 3 using a tank for scale and while it appears that a warthog is about 60% or so length of a 
tank. The distance between the lengths of the tanks weren't the same when we tested them. So we really weren't able to apply the consistency between Combat Evolved and Halo 3 to see if it would maybe work for Halo 2, as if they don't match in between these games, why do we have any reason to believe that they would match in the second game? At this point, we were just looking for any type of object that was universally sized exactly the same consistently across Halo games so that we could try to find a universal measurement to figure out what meters are actually in Halo 2. We thought about trying to use in-game lore, but we know that lore scaling isn't always correct. I mean, we could try to count the size of the Earth and then try to count to it and scale from there, but the Earth's just a skybox. And there's also the crashed ship over here on high charity, but that thing's definitely not to scale. So at the end of the day, we weren't able to get an accurate calculation for Halo 2's Warthog speed, but since our goal for this is to find what the fastest Halo Warthog is, we can say that by looking at the units per second in the game files for the Halo 2 Warthog, it ends up looking a lot closer to what the Halo Comet Evolved Warthog speed is than what one of the faster games like Halo 3's Warthog speed is. And while we still don't technically know how the units translate, so technically Halo 2's could be faster, it doesn't look like it would, if we did know what a meter was in Halo 2, be a contender for the fastest Warthog. So while there's a mystery around this, we know it's definitely not the fastest in Halo. I know it's really disappointing, but like we were streaming at twitch.tv forward slash rocketsloft for like six hours across multiple days trying to figure out strategies for counting the speed of Halo 2 Warthogs and there's just nothing we could think of. So next we were going to look to Halo 5 as there's multiple variants of the Warthog which we thought was interesting. We forged together a little map to test this out on since we could finally use Forge once again and this one became really easy to just consistently count across the board or measure across the board just because we had this map set up, we had all the Warthogs lined up, and we're able just to repeat the tests over and over again to make sure we were getting as accurate of times as possible. So what we found was the standard Halo 5 Warthog travels at 120 kilometers an hour about 74 to 75 miles an hour where it took about three seconds to cross 100 meters. We were impressed. The Halo 5 Rally Warthog with a turret actually traveled incredibly quickly, clearing its 100 meters in just 2.73 seconds, which meant that it had a top speed of 131 kilometers an hour, which is about 81 miles an hour. We were curious also about how the Scout Hogs would compare to the regular Warthogs, and from what we could tell with these tests, it appears that the Scout Hog is actually about the same speed as a standard Warthog, despite not having a turret, and that also applied for the Halo 5 Rally Scout Hog that didn't have a turret, making the same speed as the version with the turret. So no difference here as far as we can tell if they don't have turrets. And then just out of curiosity, we decided we would test the Needle Warthog as well, or it's like the Needle Sword Warthog, whatever it's called here. It just looks really cool, but it ends up being about the same speed as a standard Halo 5 Warthog. Okay, then we ran into another issue when we were trying to measure the speed of the Warthog in Halo Infinite. And before we can make a final conclusion on Halo Infinite, we're going to definitely need more tools because, because with the state that Halo Infinite is in currently at the time of recording this, we're very limited in testing the maximum speed of of a Warthog. Whether you're playing in campaign or you're playing in multiplayer, chances are you haven't even been able to reach the maximum driving speed of the Warthog yourself as there's no real straightaways where you could just test this out. Hopefully when Forge comes out, we'll be able to have a more accurate understanding for Halo Infinite as we can build an actual straightaway to drive down. And without having co-op campaign, it's very hard to set up multiple markers to indicate how far zero meters is as a starting point and then 200 meters so we can accelerate to and then a final 100 meters to measure. So we did the best we could though in trying to figure out our average top speed with the Halo Infinite Warthog with what we were limited to in multiplayer, though we do realize we didn't give the vehicle as much of a runway because we just didn't have the space to do it to get the vehicle to possibly the highest most speed. We tested out a ton of multiplayer maps trying to see what we could do to get the vehicle as fast as possible. And we ended up choosing this launch site level as it has a little straightaway that is just barely long enough to get an acceleration going, though it's not really the straightest. We also had to limit our measuring distance to try to capitalize on not averaging the lower speeds when we're accelerating up to, and to just try to capture the fastest speed in the entire route. So instead for Halo Infinite, we only measured the last 50 meters instead of the last 100 meters so that we weren't down averaging the speed based on acceleration time. So in this case, we found that the Halo Infinite Warthog 
dog took 1.85 seconds to clear a 50 meter stretch at the end of the route, which when we put that back into the equation we were using earlier, means that the Halo Infinite Warthog could travel about 97 kilometers an hour, or in this case, 60.27 miles per hour. Significantly slower than most versions of the Halo Warthog, but we do realize we are limited to our testing ability here. If I could speculate, I think that we could in a straight away see this Warthog traveling a bit faster, but I actually don't think that this Warthog will compare to Halo 5's Warthog and the speeds that it gets there. I think it is still a slower Warthog overall. I don't necessarily think it's a contender to be the fastest vehicle of all time, so I do feel okay with us not having the exact measurement yet, though we will test this out on our Twitch channel once we have access to either Co-op or Forge, whichever we really need to test this out. Obviously Forge will be better, so make sure you're following us over there so you don't miss out our tests. So ultimately, this was the order of Warthog speeds that we were working with, showing us the fastest speed to our slowest speed. And at the end of the day, the fastest Halo Warthog of all time was that Halo 5 Rally Warthog with an average top speed of 131 kilometers an hour or 81 miles per hour. It also, of course, tied with the Halo 5 Rally Scout Hog, which were pretty much the same thing. Though it is worth noting that the Halo 2 Anniversary Golden Warthog was very, very close with 130 kilometers an hour or about 79 to 80 miles per hour, meaning that possibly in perfect settings, if we were able to really just fully go all out and test out these vehicle speeds, it might actually be the same speed as that Halo 5 vehicle. There is the high possibility that these vehicles can reach those same speeds. Now, of course, we are leaving out other examples of Warthogs, like the Warthogs in Halo Wars, which we don't even know where to start to try to measure that. And then there's the Warthog in Forza, which travels at 117 miles per hour. So technically can reach 119, but the 117 is supposed to be an Easter egg thing. Uh, but this obviously doesn't count for what we're testing here. And the real world Warthog does vary based on the weight of a person on the Warthog, but it can travel like up to 15 miles per hour. So it's definitely not a contender for the fastest. And then there was one more thing we did want to test. Interestingly enough, on the multiplayer level in Halo Reach Speed Halo, your Warthog can travel at a very quick speed as it's just going through teleporters at a downward angle, getting more and more speed. However, one thing I've noticed over the years is when you're playing this game type, if you actually stop accelerating, your vehicle will significantly move faster than if you're holding the controller stick forward to try to pick up acceleration. My theory is that the Warthog traveling downhill hits its maximum speed and will stop accelerating if you're holding the acceleration down because the Warthog's vehicle max speed is met. However, if you let go of the acceleration, I think the game actually changes how it's monitoring the speed of the vehicle where it's no longer accounting for a vehicle speed, but instead moving object speed. And that's why the Warthog can travel even faster. So that was our findings for this video. It was a lot of fun to dig into this and try to see what we could find along the way. If you enjoy us going way into too much depth and detail on things like this, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Also, this video would not be possible if we didn't have some patrons supporting us over on Patreon. Thank you so much to these legends for helping us out. But also, if you are a viewer, maybe you've been a viewer for a while and you feel like our content has been worth any value to you, maybe you could throw us a couple dollars our way on Patreon. It's totally not required, but even a few dollars actually goes a really long way to helping us make this type of content. So you could help us out if you want to. Otherwise, thanks so much for all the support. That's it for today. We'll see you next time with a new video.